Within the last few years, a lot of audiophile records has been available. For example, Analog Production make these UHQR records, and uh, Mobile Fidelity has introduced the One Steps uh, or Ultra Discs, and uh, even on uh, a special uh, vinyl formula called Super Vinyl. But this is nothing new. Back in the 70s, when I started buying records, they were also made a special effort to bring the best possible sound quality to our listening rooms and our turntables. We're going to look into this in this little video. Hello, I'm Captain Phoenix, and welcome to my corner. Today we're going to talk about the one-step uh, records of the 1970s, the direct-to-disc records. I'm going to show you uh, some of the records in my collection, tell you something about it, about them, and um, I'm going to recommend you uh, some of them in the end of the video. But um, I'll just put down these one first, and then I think we should start by looking at the record uh, recording process and uh, how these uh, uh, direct-to-disc records are different uh, from the ordinary records and uh, how one-steps are made. So uh, first we have the musicians playing for us, and then we have a recording of what they're playing. Uh, and back in the days it was on a, on a tape like this, today it's digital. It was uh, could be two tracks, could be tr three tracks. Um, in the in the early uh, '60s, it was uh, four tracks in the studios. Uh, in the middle of the the '60s, it was uh, eight tracks, and l later in the end of the '60s, it was uh, 16 track. In the '70s, we got uh, 24 and uh, even uh, 32 tracks. So. Uh, a lot uh, of, of tracks and possibilities for the musicians to uh, add extra instruments, uh, to double uh, uh, voices and uh, to play. The same musician could play different uh, instruments on the same recording. The first example of this uh, is, uh, I think, uh, this one, uh, Bill Evans. <coughs> Conversations with myself, you can hear here uh, Bill Evans playing uh, three-handed uh, with himself or three uh, piano voices played by the same man on the same record. That was uh, possible because they had a three-track uh, recorder, uh, recorder, recording machine in the studio. So after the recording is done, uh, the mastering process uh, goes on and uh, this is uh, mastered and mixed down to uh, normally a two-track for stereo uh, on the master tape. Um, and uh, then the master tape is uh, used for cutting the lacquer. The lacquer, the process where you cut the, the lacquer, um, the physical representation of a, a record, uh, it's plated, some added some um, um, some plating metal, uh, or you can have a direct uh, a direct metal mastering uh, a technique which was developed, uh, I think, in the 80s. And from this uh, uh, lacquer, you uh, go two ways uh, with the one step process, uh, which you see here on the top, you, uh, you have the, the, um, the lacquer. The, the master uh, uh, recording here and uh, make make a stamper uh, and from which you press the record that you can buy and then there's the ordinary process or what's the ordinary process uh, where you have a father a mother a, a stamper and from that stamper you make uh, the record that uh, we buy so there's a lot more uh, steps involved here with the possibility of uh, of a uh, quality loss uh, in the process uh, from here to, to the final product. What is different and uh, what uh, happened uh, with the direct disc records I have illustrated here. On, on the top we see the, the one-step process, um, the tapes, uh, the, the cutting of the lacquer, the stamper and the record The record we, uh, we um, buy. Here we have the uh, direct uh, to disc uh, process uh, and you see there's no tapes involved. So for the direct to disc the musicians played directly through a mixer, directly into um, the, the lathe uh, where the, uh, the cutting uh, happened. And then after that it followed the, the process with the father, the mother and the stamper. So you see there's the same number of steps in, in the, the one step uh, process at the top and the uh, direct to disc uh, step uh, uh, in the bottom. So the direct to disc uh, process was uh, the, uh, was the, the 
try, they were trying to to get the maximum uh, record quality uh, for us to listen to in the 70s, but in a different way than the, with one steps. So let's have a look at uh, what I've got here. Uh, one company that is, uh, I think they started uh, the, the direct-to-disc process was uh, a company called uh, Sheffield Lab or Sheffield uh, Recording, uh, a California-based uh, company uh, which made a lot of uh, uh, direct-to-disc records in the uh, early 70s and all the way until the beginning of the 80s. Uh, the record was, uh, the, sorry, the, the recording company was started by uh, uh, these two gentlemen here, Lincoln Mayorga and uh, to the left, uh, Doc Sachs, a mastering engineer, is not with us anymore, but he is a really big uh, name in um, in mastering. And uh, they started uh, Sheffield Lab together. This is one of their first uh, records here. You can see the, the, the technical uh, side of the, the recording is, is very well uh, represented here. Uh, this is pop music. It's a mixture. It's, uh, it's no specific uh, uh, line in it. Um, this one, uh, Chef, uh, Sheffield Lab 2, uh, uh, Thermal Houston, Pressure Cougar. I've got the music in me. I'll get back to that one in a little while. And uh, some of the others they made, Harry James, the trumpeter and band leader. Uh, this one, um, the King James uh, version. Uh, number four, their fourth record was uh, the other uh, founder, Lincoln Mallorca, playing solo piano Brahms. Uh, Dave Grusin was on the fifth uh, uh, recording. Uh, some fusion uh, uh, Music we right now playing uh, playing a guitar for instance uh, here another one with the uh, hair James and uh, here's one uh, I'd like to show you a little bit more about because they tried all different categories with this uh, um, direct to disc technique here we got a classical record uh, with uh, um, uh, Wagner music uh, from the Ring uh, uh, Ride of the Valkyries and this as you can see it's gold. Gold print. It's it's very very luxury uh, production here. A hundred music musicians from the Los Angeles Philharmonic um, is uh, playing here. Uh, the direction is Eric Leinstorf. I think he's he's German. And um, inside this uh, this uh, booklet, very good quality again. With uh, you see this special paper. And the funny thing is that you could not produce uh, very many. You only had one lacquer. You couldn't make another lacquer because you had no uh, master tape. So only a few thousand records was made uh, from each lacquer. And that makes it a very uh, funny decision to, to have uh, over 100 musicians playing and uh, only being able to, to sell a few thousand uh, records. Uh, you can't have, you can't have make um, <laughs> a lot of profit on this. And they even made two. Um, these are from, the, uh, from, I think, 77 or 78. A lot of other uh, uh, folk country uh, music. Uh, the third one with uh, Harry James uh, here. And uh, the last one I've got uh, was a single, uh, single uh, guitar uh, with uh, Michael uh, Newman, uh, which we see here. So that was um, the records from uh, the, I'd say, inventor of the direct-to-disc. In practical, they were. Made a lot of direct-to-disc uh, records. Others uh, tried as well. Uh, as I think there was a lot of uh, jazz uh, put out as, as uh, direct-to-disc records. This one with the uh, Kling... Kling Climax Jazz Band uh, from a dishwasher group. We have got uh, Buddy Rich and Mel Tomei here on, on this one. Also, jazz, big band jazz. Um, Les Brown, the, the band leader, uh, I think he plays the saxophone as well. Uh, this one, uh, Lou Belson, the drummer, um, and the big band as well. And um, some fusion music uh, with the with Bear Miles, who, who I think he plays the piano. Um, so a lot of different genres uh, was to be found, uh, uh, could be found in the direct to disc uh, recording. This one uh, is Intensive Care. I'll get back to that as well. It's uh, jazz with uh, uh, Paul Smith, uh, Ray Brown, and Lou Belson uh, on drums. Uh, yeah. Then uh, there were a, a record company called Crystal Clear Records. I think that is what what they intended to, to make, Crystal Clear uh, Records. Uh, this one is uh, with uh, Charlie Bird and another one where very uh, 70s uh, uh, cover here, uh, direct uh, disco. And um, this, uh, these two records are, as you can see, um, uh, made in white vinyl. And as you might be able to see, it's uh, 45 RPM. So uh, they tried 
way back in 76 where these records are from to obtain an even better sound quality with uh, going uh, 45 RPM instead of uh, the normal 33 which the others are and they even uh, tried with another uh, type of uh, vinyl uh, formula here which should be quieter than the ordinary one I'm not sure it is but they, they did uh, a lot of uh, effort here uh, and a small Danish uh, record label called uh, Steeple Chase mainly jazz made uh, a couple of uh, direct to disc and the Danish uh, cartridge uh, producer Autophone which I'm, which I'm sure you know uh, made this one it's a, a test record on the one side uh, for, for uh, adjusting your, your tone arm your cartridge your turntable and on the other side uh, there's uh, uh, music uh, in uh, direct, uh, direct cut direct to disc uh, quality to demonstrate um, your equipment. There's some uh, a rock uh, rock record here from uh, the Canadian band uh, <coughs> Rough Trade, uh, direct to disc as well, and uh, a rather late one. Um, the latest one I got is uh, Lee Ridnow on the line. Um, as you can see, it's a Japanese pressing. It's uh, JVC. Um, and uh, an interesting thing about this is that uh, it's made on a, a special formula of a vinyl. I think if we move this over here, I think you can see this. This is uh, transparent, so this is not a black, solid black as uh, the ordinary records are. It's transparent. It's a special formula of a vinyl, which uh, JVC made and was used for this uh, direct to disc. And that's something we have um, experienced with a lot of the, the uh, new. Uh, Recordings, new audio file recordings as well. They use a special uh, vinyl formula, very similar to to this one. So a lot of the things that has uh, happened uh, lately on the uh, one steps and the, the, the special uh, super vinyl, which I showed you in the introduction, uh, was already uh, 45 RPM as well. Was already happening in the mid uh, 70s and late 70s and uh, beginning of the 80s. So. Um, a lot of uh, effort was made to to um, to produce the best possible quality for um, at that uh, time. The latest one I've got, and uh, this is not the right version to show you, it's direct to disc from Master Tape, but uh, there's uh, a thousand copies made direct uh, to disc without the tape involved. This is a German band they're called Friends of Carlotta. This uh, recording is from uh, 1999, a time where the vinyl record was almost uh, dead, um, just barely breathing. And um, a lot of uh, technical and other uh, um, uh, obstacles was uh, just around the corner when you made these uh, ones uh, uh, direct to disc recordings. If, for instance, in the last tune on this record side, somebody made a, a musical or technical uh, mistake or error, they had to record all over again because they couldn't just stop the, the, the master tape, they couldn't just stop the tape and re-record. Because when you start cutting, you have to cut the entire uh, um, lacquer all the way. So if an uh, uh, error comes up uh, somewhere, technical or whatever, they have to start all over again. And uh, all musicians have to play right at the same time. And um, so it's, it was rather uh, complicated to, to, um, to make these uh, records. The music on these records, well, I'd love to say that uh, this was really good music, but I'm afraid that a lot of the music is not very interesting. Um, a lot of the music is, uh, records are made, it seems like, uh, for, for the technical reasons of it. But I would uh, I recommend, uh, anyways, a couple of them. One of them is uh, this um, 1983 Lee Ridnauer on the line. It's uh, the sound quality is really good. It's rich. It's full. It's like uh, like records were made in the early eighties. Um, rich bass and a, a very very fine pressing. That's that's really high quality. The second one is this one, <coughs> uh, the the intensive care, and these three gentlemen, Paul Smith, Ray Brown, and uh, Louis Belson, they are around sixty years old when they uh, recorded this and. Uh, you you think think they were twenty? It's there's so much power in the way they play, and the technical quality is really really good. I really recommend this. It's it's really kicking. Um, just these uh, three musicians here, and the last one um, is this. Uh, 
Thelma Houston, Pressure Cougar. I've got the music in me. Uh, here you find uh, a lot of the top uh, studio musicians uh, from, the, from the West Coast of, of the USA, uh, way back in 70, 75. Uh, this one I really used a lot. I worked at a record, uh, a radio store my daddy had uh, in 75, and um, we used this to demonstrate the, the equipment. Uh, I got so fond of this record that I even uh, bought two of them uh, way back. I have still got them both. This one is still sealed, as you can see. So I have one when uh, if uh, the other one uh, gets uh, worn out. So um, yeah. So uh, I hope that you find you found this interesting a little story about uh, how uh, the record companies try to obtain uh, the best possible sound quality way back in the seventies. Um, of course, it's not on the level of what we can get today with uh, with all the development that has been in materials and technique and so on. But uh, still some good uh, music to be found in a superb quality. So, um, and uh, these ones are not expensive. I think uh, on Discord you'll find uh, these three I recommend from uh, 10 to 15 uh, euros, 15 to, to 20 dollars. So it's it's not expensive to, to try to have uh, some of the these uh, flagship, uh, flagships of the, the 70s uh, sound quality wise. I hope you found this interesting and see you next time. Thank you.